once again some utility functions in order to convert some of these integers from host byte order to network byte order we use h tones for a short int this stands for host to network short similarly this there is an h tone l which is host to network long this is for a four byte integer conversion from host byte order to network byte order similarly to i would say back convert from nbo to hbo we have network to host short and network to host long also to convert ip addresses from the ascii dotted representation we have an inet underscore a to n which is ascii to network see we normally represent ip addresses as 192.168.2.17 etc etc but once this is converted into the 4 byte integer it's going to be in a binary format now this conversion is done by using the inet underscore a to n functions there are many such functions which are available this is just one of them also to convert a binary ip address into an ascii dotted format we use the inet underscore n to a call which is network to ascii many such exist you can explore the man pages as your experience with network and socket programming increases in the days to come now let's dive deeper into the syscalls itself right first we look at socket as we've already discussed socket creates the end point for communication now what it takes in is a domain a type and a protocol now for ipv4 communication the domain is always pf underscore inet this is a hash defined which is there in some of the includes file which will be there we just have to use it as is for this topic type can only be soc underscore stream or soc underscore dgram which in the first case is a TCP socket and in the second case is a UDP socket, depending on what we want to use. There can be many other types as well, but it is out of scope for this discussion. Protocol once again for this discussion is zero. We can explore more once you have more experience with this topic. An example initiation would be socket pf underscore inet soc underscore stream zero. This is going to create a TCP socket. Now, if everything goes well, a socket descriptor which is nothing but an integer is returned if there is some problem in creation of the socket then a minus one is returned next going on to bind now we talked about assigning that unique address which is a telephone number for a telephony network and which is an ip comma port combination for our internet network F to achieve this we call the bind call which attaches a particular IP and a port to our socket. Now bind takes in a socket as input which we created through the previous socket call and a structure which we talked about previously which is a SOC ADDR structure which should contain the IP address and port information. Now as we've already discussed to make things a little simple we would typically use a SOC ADDR underscore in structure and then cast it to a SOC ADDR structure address length is nothing but the length of the data structure which we are passing as an example let's say we declare a addr underscore in structure as my we'll fill up the family as pf underscore inet we've discussed this previously then we fill up the port now as we discussed because port is a short int and two bytes so the byte ordering is important and because these packets are going to go on the network they have to necessarily be in the big adn format which is the network byte order so to convert at into the network byte order we use h tones or host to network short the ip address currently is in addr underscore any this is a special constant which says the ip address would be all available ip address for that interface we'll come into all this when we do the programming exercise in the next tutorial just bear with me for the time being once we filled up this structure we called bind to bind to that port and ip now once we are bound as we said we have to put our ringer on in order to hear when somebody wants to connect to us this is typically accomplished by calling listen through which we can listen on a socket it takes a socket and a backlog both integers as input backlog typically means the maximum list of pending connections which you're telling the operating system to handle what does this mean let's say you are currently listening one client connects to you and you're talking with that client exchanging some data by that time some other client arrives you don't want that client to get a connection refused just because you're already processing somebody else so you want that client to wait till you have processed this client so there has to be some way to tell the operating system that okay you know have a queue of five or ten clients at the maximum 
and then maybe refuse connection to the rest of them because this is all I can handle at one time. So this is accomplished by using listen and that is what backlog does. Except now let's say a client is connecting to you using the connect call. You need to accept that client's connection. This is accomplished by the accept call. It takes in a socket as input. This is the same socket which is in listen state which we created which is bound to that port and IP address. Now to accept you actually pass an empty data structure of type soc addr underscore in cast to the addr type which would return information about the client as a server you would like to know the IP address and the port number of the client you are communicating to except passes all this information to us. Once again when we program things will be much more clearer. Here is a small example of how to use except. We we'll look, look at it in more detail when we are doing programming. Connect. As we discussed, connect is to connect to a service. This is typically called by a client to connect to a server. Once again, it takes a socket which the client has already created as input and a data structure which defines the address of the server itself and of course the size of the data structure. As an example, you can call connect after filling up the server underscore ADDR structure with the IP address port number of the remote server. Finally, connect succeeds, we are connected, then we can use send, receive, read, write, etc. calls to send and receive data. Some examples are there, but I think it would be clearer once we get into the programming aspect of it. Send and receive basically take in the socket they need to use to send receive data, a message they want to send to the other endpoint or a message they want to receive from the other endpoint in case of receive, the size of that message and some flags. For our purposes, we'll just keep the flag as zero for now. Once you are more accustomed with the practices of network programming, you can dig deeper on what other flags can be used. Close, as we've discussed, is to close the connection. It was like the final goodbye. All data has been exchanged and both the clients now want to close the endpoint for connection. Well, that was a long, <laughs> discussion of all the theory. I've been speaking I think non-stop for the last 15 minutes. So enough of theory. Finer points will only be clear once we start the coding because network programming has a lot of data structures, a lot of new calls which at first glance if you know just done theoretically with the presentation can be very very confusing. So let's move on to programming examples and once we do those examples things will be much more clearer. First what I would say is download the code along with those examples and just try to follow what's happening in those videos and then try compiling the code yourself and try and make some smaller changes here and there. Uh, this would help you to better understand and get a grasp of the subject faster. With this, I'd like to end this tutorial. I hope you had fun. Thank you.